Hello and welcome again to my physical science online lab video series. In today's lab video, I would like to talk about optics and specifically lenses, one of which I am holding now. <clears throat> a little more seriously though, I, I do want to do a quick walkthrough of the lens lab um, for the online physical science course. In uh, today's lab, you're going to need a few pieces of equipment. Um, these include, of course, some sort of a positive converging lens. So, like a magnifying glass works out nicely as a converging lens. Um, you need a ruler or meter stick so that you can measure distances. You need a light source. Um, actually, a candle works really well for this, um, but if you don't want to do a candle, then you can make do with something like one of these incandescent lamps. <clears throat> and you will need uh, a viewing screen of some sort. Viewing screen basically means something like a piece of white paper that you can project images onto. And um, for convenience sake, you may want some method of actually mounting the lens. I don't have that on me up here, but um, you don't strictly need one. However, if you're not going to mount the lens, it may work better to have a lab partner. Um, and last but not least, you need some sort of a collimated light source. So. Uh, Today's first vocabulary word is collimated light source. And I'll just draw what that means here and then I'll demo it, kind of, sort of. So a collimated light source could include something like the sun. Uh, most lasers are collimated, although I don't think a laser is going to work very well for this because most lasers that you can easily obtain have a relatively small beam diameter. Um, some basically like a spotlight kind of flashlight are nearly collimated. Basically what collimation means is if this is your source and it's emitting beams, those beams are more or less parallel to each other. So this is a collimated light source. Okay, so I'll demo that also because I happen to have um, and actually just kind of dug this up from our equipment room downstairs, I have this little uh, laser box, you know, so I can pew pew shoot some lasers. Um, I'm going to go ahead and turn the camera so that we can see the lasers on the wall. So you see that they're all sort of equally spaced. If I move in closer, move farther away, the, the beam maybe diverges vertically, but they're not diverging horizontally. So horizontally, these are collimated beams. Vertically, maybe not so much. Um, and by the way, the wall functions okay as a viewing screen, although I would maybe choose something a little smaller like a piece of paper. So um, basically, what we're doing in this lab is we're looking for different ways of determining the focal length of the lens. So the first couple of uh, methods of doing that are fairly similar. Uh, you can use the sun to do that. <clears throat> the thing with the sun is if you collimate light, or if you have a collimated ray from the sun and you use a large magnifying glass like this, just be aware that the uh, focus may start a fire. It does have the tendency to burn through things, so be aware of that. <clears throat> you can even try to use that to your advantage if you want. Basically what you do uh, for the first part is that you want to um, Basically, you'll take your lens, you'll take the sun, and you'll focus the sun through the lens, and you'll just see how far away from the lens does that focus occur. 
Um, so where is the the light going to be in the smallest concentration of a circle? And let me actually kind of demonstrate that a little bit with the laser box. Um, so here I'm shining the laser box onto the wall. I have to sometimes push the button because it charges. And if I move the lens closer to the laser box, you see that these get a little bit closer together. That means that they are focusing. So if I move back a little further, at some point there is a minimum spread between these. So that right there maybe is the focus from the lens. So I would measure the distance from the lens that I was holding to the wall where I was projecting those beams. And that's a, a rough estimate for the focal length. Okay. Um, a, another way of estimating that would be very similar to the first. Again, I'll use the laser box for demonstration purposes. Um, so here I'm shining the laser onto the wall. Point this camera towards the wall where I'm actually shining laser at. And you can measure how far apart these guys are. You know, they're a pinky's width apart, or if I had my ruler close at hand, I could grab my ruler. Nano stick will do just as well. Okay, so I shine it onto the wall, and according to this, they are. This is the light nanosecond side of it. They are between 0.5 and 0.76 light nanoseconds apart. Um, by the way, a, a light nanosecond is approximately equal to a foot. Light travels approximately one foot every nanosecond. Uh, we could maybe measure that a in a little more useful of a manner by using centimeters or inches. So in terms of centimeters, these are about eight centimeters apart. Okay, so what I do is I pick a size uh, spread that I want. Let's say I want to know when are these going to be only one centimeter apart or maybe two centimeters apart. So I move this lens until these rays are only one centimeter apart, which is maybe about right there. So I measure this distance, and there actually should be a second distance right here where they're also a centimeter or two apart. And so there's there were two locations where I could hold that lens with respect to the laser box and get a separation of two centimeters. So I need to measure both of those uh, uh, distances between lens and wall and then I divide, uh, basically I average them and that average should be the focal length of my lens. So that's the second method. Third method is the one that's going to take a bit more time for this one, you get rid of the sun. Well, you stop using it as your light source, I mean. And instead, you use some other non collimated light source. For example, this very hot incandescent lamp would work, or you could use a candle or a lighter or what have you. So, what that is going to look like is you want to mount a lamp or candle somewhere and you pick some location let me focus down a little here pick some location for your uh, lens to be held and then you take your little imaging screen and you move it until you get the clearest, sharpest image of your source on that screen. So 
what you'll see basically, let's say you use a candle, and, and I, I really would recommend using a candle if you can. I, I can't really have one in my office uh, by, by university policy, but if you're allowed to use a candle, it's going to work out uh, most nicely. You'll basically see an image that's formed on the viewing screen of the candle. It'll look kind of like a, almost like a shadow or a bright shadow of the candle, if you will. You basically just move your viewing screen until you have the sharpest looking image on that viewing screen. And then you measure the distance between viewing screen and lens and you measure measure the distance between lens and uh, candle. And those two distances are the image distance and the object distance respectively. And so from there you use the lens maker's equation to figure out where the focal length should be. So I'm going to go ahead and draw a diagram of that on my little board. So here we'll place the candle there's some flame from the candle. Here is our lens. And then maybe your screen is right here and you get some image of the candle. It actually, the image may be upside down. Okay, so you get some image of the candle. And this distance right here is your object distance, DO. This distance right here is your image distance, di. And according to the lens maker's equation, 1 over do, sorry, this is not the lens maker's equation, this is the uh, thin lens equation, 1 over do plus 1 over di is going to equal 1 over f, where f is the focal length of your lens. And the units on f are going to be equal to whatever units you decide to measure this object and this image distance in. So what you're going to do with this third method is you're actually going to set up your candle somewhere stationary. You'll move the lens somewhere You'll find where the image is, you'll measure both distances, you'll record that data. Then you'll move the lens again, you'll find where the new image is formed, you'll record both of these distances, and so on. And you'll keep doing that till you've got maybe, um, say, 8 to 10 data points. And then you're going to make a graph in which you graph 1 over DO versus 1 over DI. And from that graph, you should be able to figure out what the focal length is. Um, usually, if you're trying to figure out what a third parameter is from a graph, it's either going to end up being a slope or an intercept of the graph that you've made, or some other parameter in the graph if it's not linear. This graph really should be linear as long as you're graphing 1 over DO plus 1 over DI. So, um, the only other vocabulary word that I wanted to give you for this particular lab is that 1 over f, 1 over the focal length, is sometimes called the lens power. And so if f is in meters, then the lens power is in diopters. So if you have a focal length of 2 meters, then you have a lens power of 0.5 diopters. If you have a focal length of uh, 0.25 meters, then you have a lens power of four diopters. I think that's all for today's lab. <clears throat> so thanks for watching, and I hope you found this video helpful, and I suppose I'll see you next time.